Okay, so in this video we're going to look at um, some more first order differential equations. We're looking at integrating factors still. Um, we're just going to look at a few more examples just so you can see a few more things before you have a go. Um, this one, again, we've got a trigonometric function, sec x here, which is 1 over cos x. Um, we're going to work out the integrating factor. So we do that by doing e of the integral of this thing that's next to the y, so this sec x just here. So we've got to integrate sec x, um, which is not something that I just know. So I get my full book out, I look it up, and it turns out that the integral of sec x is ln of sec x plus tan x. So it's horrible, a horrible integral. But it's quite nice in this situation because that ln is going to cancel that e because they're inverse functions. So it's going to leave me with just the sec x plus tan x bit by itself when these two things cancel out, a bit like squaring and square rooting. So this might, means my integrating factor is sec x plus tan x. So I've got times this whole equation here by sec x plus tan x. So I'll do sec x plus tan x times dy dx. We've got to do sec x plus tan x times by uh, y sec x. Okay, so sec x times sec x is sec squared x, and sec x times tan x is sec x tan x, and then we've got to put the y in there because that I've, I've times this out because this is going to be easier to see in a second what's going on. And then the last thing we do is sec x plus tan x times cos x. So sec x plus tan x times by cos x. So everything's times by that. Um, now here, I just want to show you that sec x actually differentiates to be sec x tan x, and tan x differentiates to be sec squared x. So this hasn't worked, you see. And the y differentiates to be dy dx. So this would become the differential of sec x plus tan x times by y. In practice, I would probably never write this bit down. Um, not if I've done a lot of them. I'd just go, my integrating factor times my y, d dx, we know it's going to be that. It's that always. Whether you work it out and realise why, or you just go straight there. Um, so the more you do these, the happier you should get to sort of skip this step here. The one thing I would warn you about is when you start skipping that step here, don't forget to steal times the cos x by the integrating factor as well. What happens is people tend to skip this step, they tend to skip this step as well, and that can be really dangerous. So um, until you've done a lot of them, don't skip the step, but in the future you could be looking to do that. Um, right now, probably safer not to. This bit here we times out. So sec x times cos x, or sec x is 1 over cos x, and 1 over cos x times by cos x, they're going to cancel each other out and give you a 1. Here, tan x is sin x over cos x times by cos x. Again, the sine on top is going to stay, but the cos x times the cos x here, they're going to cancel out. I'm doing that without writing it down because I've done it loads of times. You probably haven't. So there's no shame now in just scribbling down a bit of paper. Can you see what that is? Whatever cos x, what that is, sine x over cos x. And check, does it turn out to give you this? We're now going to integrate the side. So here we get sec x plus tan x times by the y. Do dx goes. And this side, we're going to integrate this side. So the integral of 1 and the integral of sine. Integral of 1, of course, is x. Integral of sine, ooh, minus cos. And then we get a plus c. And we're almost done. Customary now is to divide by sec x plus tan x. Um, it doesn't give you anything nice. It doesn't give you anything nice. It just looks horrible, but you still do it. So you get x minus cos x plus c divided by sec x plus tan x. And that is the uh, solution uh, for that particular first order differential equation. We're going to do one more, um, not a trigonometric one, but a slightly different one. Okay, so we're going to do one more uh, differential equation. 
um, this one is 2x dy dx plus y is equal to x squared. And uh, what makes this one interesting is because it's the first time we've seen any numbers in front of dy dx before it's just always been a 1 here. And there's been a term here, a term here, but there's been only a dy dx on this side. Now this 2x is actually really important. We can't just take the 1 and do the integrating factor the 1. It must be true that this is a 1 here, otherwise this whole method doesn't work. So the first thing we have to do is divide by the 2x. And uh, x squared divided by 2x is, of course, x over 2, or half x if you like. Now, once we've done that, we now can see what the real function in front of the y is. So the only way you can do the integrating factors is making sure you've got a 1 in the front here before you start. e of the integral of 1 over 2x dx. I only want the uh, x part, not the y bit. Now, the integral of 1 over 2x is actually going to be a half the integral of 1 over x, which is the x. Which we can write as e ln x to the half. Bring that half in using the logarithm rules. e and the ln cancel out to give us x to the power half. So we now times the whole thing through by x to the power half. x to the half times dy dx. Here we're going to get rather awkwardly x to the half over 2x times y. That actually reduces down, we'll do that later. And we get x times x to the half here, all over 2. Okay, let's make this look a bit, a bit nicer. So we've got x to the half just here, times dy dx. Here we've got a half on top and one on bottom, so let's do a half, take away one. We're going to cancel this down to be a half on the bottom there. And just here we're going to times them together and get three halves. The half and the one are going to add together over two or put the half there. Now it's not easy to see, but actually that differentiates to be there. I'll show you why. X to the half differentiates to be x to the reduced power by one, so it goes from being a half to being minus a half. Um, also the power is pulled to the front, so pull the power to the front, reduce it by one, which is actually the same as writing a half times x to the half, but 1 over x to the half, which is of course the same as 1 over 2 x to the half, which is what we had there. So that differentiates correctly, and the y will differentiate to be dy dx. So ignoring this little bit of working out here, we can see that we've got to write this section here as being the integrating factor times by y. Of course, we're getting really used to that now, aren't we? Over here, we've got to write down the half x to the 3 halves. Okay, going to the top. Uh, we integrate so the d dx is gone. Just here we're going to integrate the half x to the 3 over 2. Okay, so the integral here is increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So we're dividing by 5 over 2, which means we're timesing by 2 over 5. The half is still there. Uh, the 2 and the 2 there cancel out. So it's going to leave us with x to the half y is equal to 1 fifth of x, 5 over 2 plus c. Just double check this one here. 5 over 2 comes out, the 5 cancel, the 2 comes down, and we're left with yeah, 3 over 2. Uh, we now got to divide by x to the half or times by x to the minus a half. So times by x to the minus a half. Oh, 5 over 2 plus minus a half is. 2, because it comes to the 2, which is 2. And here we've got c, x to the minus half. And there's our solution to that particular equation. Okay, guys, good luck with your uh, first order of differential equations and integrating factors. Until I see you again, goodbye.